Last month, Nintendo's Game Boy celebrated its 25th anniversary, but no one remarked on the fact that its true successor just celebrated its own 15th anniversary. No, not Game Boy Advance. I'm talking about the real heir to the Game Boy throne, Bandai's Wonderswan. You've never heard of it? Oh, well, yeah. The Game of Thrones didn't work out so well for Wonderswan, and its claim to dominance was quickly usurped. But Wonderswan is well worth a look even though it never made its way out of Japan. Not only was it designed by Gunpei Yokoi, the father of Game Boy, it reflected Yokoi's guiding principles of making inexpensive gaming devices with surprising and cool features that helped offset their limitations. Since Bandai never released the Wonder Swan outside Japan, you'll need to go hunting for these games and occasionally force your way through a lot of Japanese text, but it's cool. If you love classic games and or portable systems, it's well worth the pain. This sequel to Ark the Lad 2, it stars Elk, the hero of Ark 2, is admittedly pretty heavy on Japanese text which doesn't make it the friendliest of games for Americans. But if you know the series, you can puzzle your way through the adventure. Your reward? The same great strategy RPG action you loved on PlayStation, except, you know, portable. Before there was Final Fantasy Tactics Advance, Square gave us their real first portable strategy RPG, Blue Wing Blitz. Though similar in many respects to Front Mission, Blitz focuses on aerial units instead of walking tanks. The rules admittedly take some getting used to since, yes, the text is in Japanese, but the payoff is a fun and gorgeous portable RPG. There have been many ports of Nichibutsu's arcade classic Crazy Climber through the years, but the Wonderswan version was the first to get it right, straight out of the box. The original arcade game featured unique dual stick controls for climbing, and the Wonderswan's ambidextrous button layouts made it possible to reproduce that game setup back when console developers were still trying to wrap their heads around Sony's new DualShock controller. Sure, it's an old game, but old games need love too. Ah, uh, yeah, sorry, Dicing Knight is another RPG. But this game isn't really crammed with Japanese text. The problem is that it's insanely rare. We're talking like $800, $900 here. But on the off chance a copy of this game somehow falls into your lap, it's well worth checking out. It's a curious hybrid of roguelike, action RPG, and bullet hell shooter. And unlike the system's other RPGs, it features quite a bit of English text for descriptions. Thank goodness for small favors, huh? An interesting puzzle game, the similarity of Gunpei's title to Wonderswan designer Gunpei Yokoi's name isn't a coincidence. Given that it was one of the last projects he designed before his death, the title serves as a sort of tribute. Gunpei is far simpler than it looks at first glance, and best of all, you don't actually have to track down a Wonderswan to play it. Localized versions of the game made their way to DS and PSP too. A product of the same amateur design competition that birthed Dicing Knight, Judgment Silver Sword isn't quite as expensive as its companion release. It goes for merely $250 or so. But hey, what you get for that money is a pretty fantastic shooter somewhat inspired by Radiant Silver Gun. And because the Wonder Swan could change its orientation on the fly, it's the world's only console to have had Tate mode built right in for an arcade-style shooter experience. If you've played the Game Boy Advance Klonoa titles, you should know exactly what you're in for with Moonlight Museum for Wonderswan. The GBA games were really more a sequel to this than to the PlayStation original. Lacking the power to present the game with the funky 2.5D style graphics used on PlayStation, Namco reinvented the series here to feel more like a puzzle platformer. And the system's rotation feature was put to good use here too, allowing for differently configured puzzle arrangements. You may have played Makai Toshi Saga before under the name Final Fantasy Legend, but this isn't simply a colorized version of the Game Boy Classic. It bears a strong resemblance to Final Fantasy IV, and it incorporates a few refinements that bring a 10-year-old RPG somewhat up to date. Yeah, it's all in Japanese, but if you've played the original, you can definitely sort out this rendition. One of the great ironies of Capcom's cutesy fighting game spin-off Pocket Fighters is that it never actually appeared on a pocket size system, aside from the Wonder Swan, that is. While it lacks the perfect portable streamlining of SNK's Neo Geo pocket fighting games, this version still plays well, even if the move from color to monochrome loses a little something essential in the process. Perhaps the Wonder Swan's most impressive original role-playing game, this unique adventure from developer Sting seems almost more like a visual novel in some respects, up to and including the dating game element though it nevertheless has a personality of its own. The good news is that you don't have to play this one in Japanese. Both the Game Boy Advance and PSP remakes of Riviera were localized into English. So now you know what to keep an eye out for next time you're out import shopping. For more life-changingly awesome information, keep your eyes on usgamer.net.